Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John in the Wilderness for Christ the King Sunday. I'm Father Josh Stevens, rector here. It's great to be with you all. Our curate, Ian Williams, is uh, with the, the diocesan high school retreat at Lake Logan. We've got uh, four teenagers that are there with him from this church, and uh, there's maybe 40 or so gathering from all over in the mountains. So we will pray for them at that time, and uh, we will see him next week. A few other announcements here. If you are new or you're visiting, gosh, it's great to have you. We're so glad that you're here to celebrate uh, this final Sunday of the church year with us. If you fill out a card and put it in the offering plate, uh, then we'll be in touch with you very soon. We'd love to get to know you better. Uh, a few other things as well. We have our Angel Tree Ministry up and running, and uh, you can find angels at each entrance or a bunch of them on the big tree in the parish hall. Uh, there's uh, a, a bunch left that we still need to, uh, to provide uh, Christmas gifts for. So please uh, grab one or two or, or a couple of those. And uh, we ask that you bring those back by two weeks from today. So that's December 4th. So it's coming up quickly with a roll of wrapping paper uh, in the bag as well. We had nice formation today where we talked about Advent uh, because Advent begins, would you believe, next week. Uh, so we can make this pivot in our life together as we prepare for the birth of a Savior uh, come Christmas. Uh, we'll have right one worship uh, at that time for the next few weeks, and we'll have Advent lessons and carols in a few weeks. So it'll really be a rich season uh, of preparation together. No formation next week uh, as uh, it's a holiday weekend. Uh, and then on December 4th, we've got a big day. Um, December 4th, there's a parish breakfast, first Sunday of the month, per usual. And then we also have our annual meeting uh, that Sunday. And last, last year, I don't know why, it made no sense to me, but it was packed for the annual meeting. Um, there were like 120 people there for breakfast that day. So I'm excited about this one. I've got a little special something in store for y'all. Uh, and I'm looking forward to just uh, having the meeting, look, electing our new vestry members, and presenting the budget and all that stuff. So you'll be able to eat together and we can do a little business two weeks from now. And then uh, in the afternoon at four o'clock, we have a Friends of Music concert with Kate Steinbeck, flutist, who will be uh, performing over in the parish hall. So that's four o'clock, December 4th. Uh, you won't want to miss that. These are really special uh, music programs and uh, they're fundraisers as well for uh, Friends of Music. Uh, do it, would you like to say something too about the children uh, singing today? We have the debut of a new little choral group here today. <laughs> a wonderful, wonderful choir that's been prepared and will be directed by Lynn Pischolik. Uh, they have uh, at the offertory three little pieces for young people. And the first one, you have a, a passage of music that's written there that for you to participate in at the end. They'll sing the Alleluia and then they'll sing God. God is so good, and then Jesus loves me. Then they're going to repeat the Alleluia, and then they want you to sing along with them. So you'll you'll have a chance to learn it from their beautiful voices, and it's written right there on your in your order of service. Okay. We're really happy to have this this group, and and grateful to Lynn for doing that work with them. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you to all of our children who are singing today. We're so glad to see you offer your gifts uh, to God's glory. <clears throat> And Polly, I think you had an announcement. Go ahead. Uh, yes, this is a recruitment call for uh, bell ringers for the Salvation Army. We have one more slot, and it's calling your name. <laughs> um, if anyone is available for a daytime bell ringing slot at Belk on December the 6th, please come see me. Uh, I will be available right after the service. You know you want to do this, and it's going. <laughs> That's right. Belks, where polite shoppers go. Yeah. yeah, so December 6th, that's been a great ministry for a long time, raising money for the Salvation Army. So talk to Polly about that. Any other announcements that I'm forgetting for the good of the order? Okay, well, it's wonderful to celebrate the King we have in Christ uh, today with you. So let's do just that. Let's stand as you're able, and we will sing all praise to thee for thou, O King divine.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
From the letter to the Colossians. May you be strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I want to begin this morning by admitting that I did not expect to have as much fun as we've had this November and this fall in general. There's been a lot, lot going on. We haven't even had time for our, our birthday prayers, our anniversary prayers, which we'll do today. This is Christ the King Sunday, and we'll get to that. But next week, we also begin Advent, which is a journey all its own. But we began this month with our All Souls service, November 2nd, which wasn't exactly fun, but certainly sacred. Then on All Saints Sunday, we had a great time recognizing new members, baptizing and renewing our baptisms, and eating breakfast together. Then last week, oh boy, our Diocese of Western North Carolina celebrated its 100th birthday. Our delegation, and I love the way that sounds, you know, our delegation, <laughs> Our delegation went to a special Eucharist and a reception Friday night at Trinity in Asheville. Our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, he celebrated that service. And our bishop, Jose McLaughlin, he preached. And he admitted openly that he was just the warm-up act for Bishop Curry, who would be addressing the convention the next day and leading the Sunday revival. And I have to tell you, man, I was so proud of... St. John in the Wilderness, because there must have been around 40 of us in attendance at Christ School last Sunday. Everywhere you looked in that field house, you'd, you'd see somebody that you knew from here. I reckon it was more than any other parish in our diocese. So, well done. Thank you for coming out. And the service did not disappoint. I still, when I think about it and I talk to you about it, there's so much joy and excitement from that unique worship service together. I don't know that we got a good recording of it uh, as a diocese. Uh, usually we do a good job of that. But I will say this, Bishop Curry's Saturday address to convention, there is a recording of that, and it is phenomenal. Uh, he said several times it was not a sermon. He was just giving a talk, but it sounded like a sermon to me. And we'll put it in our email for tomorrow. Uh, you can see it in the email. And if you click through and you watch that video, 
you'll be amazed. You have to start it at the 14th minute, though, because, uh, you know, it's sort of a stream service, so there's some, some stuff going on at the beginning. But go to the 14th minute, and you'll get to see, and I know you won't believe me. This is like, what did Jesus say to, to St. Thomas? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Well, you'll get to see a whole bunch of Episcopalians, frozen, chosen, real proper people standing up and dancing <laughs> and getting down. It was amazing. Uh, it was so joyful. So watch, watch that address by Bishop Curry. You can listen to it as you're going about something. It is really special, and I think it's especially fitting for Christ the King Sunday. For Christ the King Sunday, which is what we celebrate today, where we get to talk about what it means to have Christ as our King, what it means to be citizens of God's kingdom, and what it means to be practicing the politics of Jesus. At my last parish, the youth program would do a spaghetti dinner fundraiser to help pay for our summer mission trips. The tickets were $25 each. And you might think that's a lot for a spaghetti dinner, but this was, I mean, we didn't use the, the canned spaghetti sauce. We used the fancy jars <laughs> with the Italian names, you know. I mean, this was really good stuff. So we'd sell tickets, but the main way that we made money was that we would approach local businesses for donations for, for a silent auction, right, for gift baskets and such. So we would put all these out and we would, you know, have really nice uh, gift baskets and people would, would bid on them. And so if you've been to Colonial Williamsburg, you'll, you'll recall there's Merchant Square, which is where all those restaurants are, uh, where you can walk around. So we would go to those businesses and I could get a neighborhood kid or two to come with me and I'd let them do the talking. And uh, we'd go to the cheese shop, you know, and ask for a donation. They were always very generous or... Copper Fox Distillery, uh, we get a, a nice donation of whiskey uh, for the fundraiser. And I remember uh, we went to this one restaurant. There was a restaurant owner, owned a couple of restaurants, well known in the community. And you know, the middle school kid kind of stumbled through his speech and, and asked for a donation. And the restaurant owner was very gracious, but he explained to us that he had a policy, uh, you know, as a business owner, that he did not donate to religious or political organizations. And I remember smiling and responding quickly that, to say that I'm glad he understood the church was a political organization. <laughs> this Sunday marks the end of our church year. It's kind of like New Year celebration on the calendar. And each year during this week, we're invited to consider what it means to have Christ as our King. And I love the way this lands. I don't think Pius X had this in mind in the 1920s when he established this, this feast. But I like how it lands in November, a couple weeks after Election Day. You know, We get to talk about a different way of doing politics on Christ the King Sunday under this servant king who tends to flip everything upside down. And how we get to embody the politics of Jesus and our lives together as a church family. You'll get to hear this if you listen to Bishop Curry's sermon, his non-sermon, I should say, from that Saturday, which we'll put in the email tomorrow for you to watch. He talked about how politics in this country, we just seem to be engaged in, in, in pretty shallow thinking when it comes down to it. We tend to hang out on the surface level, where tribalism abounds, demagoguery, fear, rather than going deeper, going deeper to the source of the one who created the human family in the first place and then destroyed the barriers that exist between us by making love the most powerful force in the universe. I think we've got to go deeper as a church. We've got to find ways to ground ourselves in the politics of this Jesus of Nazareth and his kingdom, where compassion abounds. So the same sacrificial of love of Jesus that we just heard about in that gospel reading, right? This is our king on display. His power, his prestige, his throne looks like a cross. His crown 
one of thorns. And from that throne, power on display, he forgives his crucifiers. Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. And he pours out that love that God has for all of us. That's where we need to ground ourselves as a church. Let me put it to you another way. Last Sunday at 10 a.m. at Christ School at that revival, 800, 900 Episcopalians from all over the mountains of western North Carolina, we gathered to, for a church service in a high school gym. That revival was the most political thing I have ever done. This worship service, what you and me are doing right now, this liturgy is political. We are doing this because it impacts how we organize our lives as human beings. That's politics. That's deep stuff. You don't use words like king and kingdom, Messiah and Lord, like gathering and reconciliation, you know, just for fun. When else do you bow before someone? You don't exactly go around bowing or kneeling to people in your everyday life because that's what you do before kings, before monarchs. The church and our liturgy are about how we organize our lives as a people, how we find meaning and purpose. And in the truest classical sense of that, that's politics. They're about the one to whom we are loyal and creating a unity with each other. It's really hard for us to wrap our, our Western minds around this because we have been taught that politics has to do with the state or with protecting the rights of individuals. Modern political theory first makes us all into disconnected individuals who are then fenced in by laws so that we don't get in the way of each other's individual pursuits. In other words, I get to do whatever I want as long as what I want to do do doesn't have an unreasonable impact on what you want to do. Right? That's Western modern political theory. And in societies like ours, the church is welcome to try to, to have political influence over the state. It's welcome to raise up Christian leaders to you know, go to Washington and serve. The church is welcome to lobby in Congress. But we don't think of the church as political because politics has to do with, with the state, with Raleigh, with Washington, with politicians, with voting. And especially, we think, apparently, that politics has to do with talk radio, <laughs> with celebrity political experts that we've got to listen to, with opinion shows. You, don't you love it when there's like a presidential debate and you get to watch the thing, like as you're a thinking human being, but then as soon as it's over, they're going to tell you what it all meant. That's all just surface level. That's just surface level stuff. But what if, what if Christ is our king? And what if the kingdom of God is our society? And what if our politics are the politics of this Jesus who came, as our colleague said this morning, to end our division and our enslavement to sin and to free us, to bring us together under his most gracious rule. You know, that sounds like really good news to me. Hear what the politics of Jesus look like. First, God is in the habit of gathering people together. God did it with Abraham. From your descendants, I will make a great nation and they will be a blessing to the world. Jesus did it with the disciples. And we heard about it in Jeremiah today. You've been scattered by bad shepherds, he wrote. But I'm raising up a remnant. I'm going to gather together those who are ready to be a people, a branch from Jesse's tree, who will do something different. Then we hear in our gospel reading today, Jesus on the cross. What an incredible portrayal of kingship. 
Rather than, as every king has ever done in the history of humanity, rather than Jesus commanding, right? Jesus compels us by love. He's just giving out to forgiveness and healing. Even to this criminal on the cross, God reconciles us to God's self with that love and then reconciles us to each other. We're made righteous, not by our own goodness, but by Christ taking on our sins and dying and being raised for us, restoring us and forgiving us. And so what happens with that outpouring of God's love for the world is that the barriers that exist between us fade away. And so we hear Paul writing about how it just doesn't matter anymore. Jew or Greek, doesn't matter. Slave or free, it doesn't matter. Male or female, it's not so important. Black or white, rural or urban, pickup truck or Prius, pumpkin pie or apple pie, UNC or Duke. Uh -huh. You think, well, wait a second, that's, that really matters to me. See, it's about loyalty. The barriers are gone because we are one in Christ Jesus. Those are new politics, man. The one who was before all things. Did you hear that Colossians reading? Again, we like to hang out the surface level as if that's what matters. But you hear that reading from Colossians today talking about Jesus. And it's, it's about the, the cosmos, right? It's huge. The one who was before all things and in all things and through whom all things were made. In him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven. How? By making peace through the blood of his cross. Finally, and, and here's what I'm most excited about, and, th and then I'll stop. <laughs> Our liturgy, what we're doing here, right? God's gathered us. We've told the story of our reconciliation, our liturgy is the continuing performance of that drama of reconciliation that we have in Jesus Christ. This isn't just symbolic. We are here to share in our redemption. Something that happened to us long ago, and yet we experience it anew for ourselves, and we inch closer and closer and closer to the completion of what is to come. And the Eucharist, the Eucharist is a foretaste. Or why don't we put it this way? It's an appetizer of the kingdom of God. Do you see what I'm saying? God gathers us in, redeems us, loves us, and fills us. Then our liturgy enacts a politics of reconciliation in Christ. And this act of reconciliation, this political worship thing we're doing, is a counterperformance to the politics of the world, where everyone's on their own, where you win at all costs, where you forget about those who think differently from you. The politics of the kingdom are evident in you just sitting where you're sitting, gathering as a church today. The Eucharist incorporates us into Christ's body, reconciles us, and again and again we get to be fed and restored in this feast. Because you know, there will always be reasons for us to be divided as human beings. There will always be leaders or, or ideologies who pit us one against another. The politics of Western societies, man, it's just going to bounce from one crisis to the next, guaranteed. And even our psalm said this today, right? Our psalm said that the mountains are going to fall and be toppled. The earth can be moved, but still our strength 
is found in God. So we are here to kneel before our true king. We are here to be gathered into a new people. Here we reenact that reconciliation of God as we reorder our lives with the one whose love is pure and generous and complete. Here and now we continue in the politics of Jesus by being the church. And we say what that thief said on the cross. Jesus, remember us when you come into your kingdom. He has remembered us. And his kingdom is here. Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For those whose hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For our enemies and those who wish us harm. And for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray for Jose, our bishop, for Josh, our rector, for Ian, our curate, and for Sandy, our deacon. We pray for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and His Church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation and for those on the diocesan high school retreat at Lake Logan this weekend. Father Ian, Abby Stevens, Mary Shelton, Danielle Farr, Leela Martin, and Sarah Yergen. We pray also for those on our parish prayer list, Joanne, Dottie, Tom, Debbie, Linda, 
Melissa, Jean, John, Jane, and Dick Secker. Are there others? Sure, Elaine. Hear us, Lord. For your, For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Robin Howe, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put our trust in you. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Unless you have a birthday or an anniversary in November, then uh, please come forward. We'd love to say a, a special blessing for you. I remember this. gather around. <coughs> Wonderful. All right. Hugh, you want to come? Yeah, there you go. Well, what a group of November babies we have here. <laughs> and here's another one. So, Hugh, why don't you get us started? Now, you came up with the last service. You want a double blessing, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, God, God likes it when people ask for more blessing. Uh, so so uh, how old did you turn? Uh, six years old. And when, what day was your birthday on? November 10th. November 10th. Okay, happy birthday, Hugh. Well, you can tell us as much or as little as you like. Uh, it's what? not a birthday. Oh, it's an anniversary. 30, yeah, 30th. Okay, 30th anniversary. Very, very good. Congratulations. November 17th. November 17th. Very good, Debbie. 
birthday the 19th. Okay, the 19th yesterday, I guess that was. Yeah, who's this? November 29th. How old are you turning? Turning six. Oh my goodness. How about you, Linda? Nine. <laughs> nine. November 9th. November 9th. Okay. November 7th. Wonderful. Happy birthday. November 29th. November 29th. Coming up. Very good. November 24th. November 6th. Correct. Ah, see. <laughs> November 21st. Okay, very good. Excellent. Well, why don't we say a special prayer all together here. You'll find it in your bulletin. It's conveniently right where the staples are, the very middle, <laughs> down at the bottom. And then I'll say a special, special blessing for each of you. Let us pray together. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants who are celebrating birthdays or wedding anniversaries this month. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sandy and Susan, God bless you and keep you in your marriage that it might be a sign of Christ's love for his church. Amen. Amen. Debbie, God bless you this year that you're, you may grow in grace every day of your life. Amen. Bill, God bless you and keep you this year that you may continue to grow in grace in the days ahead. Amen. Amen. Grayson, you want a special blessing? No? Okay. God bless you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Linda, God bless you and keep you this year and all the days of your life. Thank you. Legree, God bless you and keep you this year and all the days of your life. God bless you and Jan. Jan, God bless you and keep you this year and all the days of your life. Such a crowd. <laughs> Darla, God bless you and keep you this year and all the days of your life. God bless you and keep you this year and all the days of your life. Michael, God bless you and keep you this year and all the days of your life. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by His glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling His death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, 
bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
blood of Christ to cover salvation.